<laughs> Hi guys, today this is some kind of special episode on my YouTube channel because this is the first viewer mail <laughs> on my YouTube channel, but not like uh, <laughs> on EV blogs. So let's open some mail the Aussie way. Let's go. One of my subscriber, his name is uh, Herr uh, Torsten. <laughs> I hope I pronounced his name well. He saw one of my video about the Steinberg UR22 Mark II uh, audio interface. And he contacted me uh, about his uh, UR22 but Mark I interface. And uh, he said his interface is completely broken, is not working and not operating at all. So he asked uh, from me a favor if I can repair this uh, audio interface. From the computer side, everything is looks okay. Everything uh, which is came after the digital part is completely messed up. So no signal from the inputs, no signals from the outputs, and even no signal f uh, f directly from the inputs to the outputs. And this is true also for the headphone amplifier section. We can say <laughs> everything which is analog and the halfy halfy half part digital is dead on this audio interface. How we arrived to this error, I know have clue because he bought this uh, audio interface on eBay as broken, okay? Because he trusted on me, maybe I can fix it for him. On the end, he can get <laughs> a really cheap but really good interface or all this interface <laughs> will go to the garbage. Fortunately, the uh, Yamaha Steinberg uh, designed really well this uh, little interface because uh, it's built by modules. This is the inputs, this is the headphone amplifier and the controlling section, and this is the output section and this is the digital section. If you believe or not, but we can fire up this uh, audio interface without the input board at all, okay? But unfortunately this is not true with this uh, analog uh, control board. You see this spot meter here? So with this spot meter you can choose between the dry input signal and between the signal from your DAW software. What is mean? All the analog signal which is generated by this small uh, digital to analog uh, converter first is going into this board then it will hit this port meter then it will go back to the output uh, section of this board. Now you can understand why I left this uh, really small analog control board connected into the main audio interface board. Let me summarize the main problems <laughs> in this project. First, of course, we cannot get the semantics for this audio interface from Steinberg and from Yamaha at all. Forgot it. The second issue with this audio interface, it came from um, the factory. <laughs> all these small SMD parts on this PCB decoded on a really weird way. So if you type in into the Google, okay, the codes what you what you find on the SMD parts, of course you will get <laughs> really weird results. This is true for all the diodes, for all the transistors and all other unknown parts. But fortunately this is not true for all the parts on this PCB. So we have information about the CPU, the memory, the back converters, the analog to digital and the digital to analog converter chip and for the op-amps. So what we can do in this situation? Of course, if we know how the main parts are working, then we can figure out what's going on with the passive and the small active parts. When I realized there is no semantics for this uh, audio interface and all these small SMD parts are coded on a really bad way, I said, no, it's uh, easy because I have a similar audio interface. 
but the Mark II, not the Mark I. <laughs> so I thought it's a good idea to open my one <laughs> and compare the two PCB and then everything will be okay. But uh, <laughs> let me show you something. So here is the MK2 <laughs> PCB. And uh, this section here is the main board. Now, find the similarities between the two. <laughs> ah, so with the MK2, they did a really big development. As you can see, in the past they used some kind of really specialized chip from the Yamaha and Cyrus Logic uh, converter and uh, GRC op-amps and uh, hmm, kind of l chipo capacitors and uh, the whole arrangement of this board is completely different from the new one. They use this as a main controller, CPU, there is no memory chip and there is a lot of changes about the layout. Maybe you can see but these two connectors is moved up to here. The power supply unit is came to here. And there is a lot of changes around the analog circuits also because now they are using much more higher quality uh, audio capacitors, total different uh, op-amps, uh, a quality is lifted up. And uh, of course they redesigned everything including the analog control board, maybe you can see, but uh, on the old version they used uh, uh, Jamicon capacitors and the same uh, GRC op-amps. Meanwhile here there is no op-amps because now all the op-amps is went to the backside of the PCB. Yeah, we can say goodbye to my uh, audio interface, which is the uh, UR22 MK2. Huh? and this one is the MK1. Let's start the reverse engineering for this repair because we don't have uh, semantics. This middle section here is the little tiny power supply unit for the whole interface. And as you can see the two voltage source is separated really clearly by this line. So this part is a part of the digital section. Meanwhile this area here is a part of the analog section. Let's go back to the issues with this interface. What we know is the USB section, so the drivers and the connection between the interface CPU and between the computer, everything is okay. We have a lot of dead analog uh, lines. So no signal from the output and no signal from the input and no mixing and no headphone signal at all. And I saw some digital signals going to the digital to analog converter. It's time to time is generating a really weird pulse on the output. Let's go back uh, to the pulses of the output. It's something like uh, this. And the next pulse is happening after every two seconds. And time to time this edge here, it has a different angles, okay? So it's like this or like this or like this. And this level here it's also changing, just a really bit, just a tiny bit is moving up and moving down. Now this level of the signal, it's about 2.8 volt. This puppy here, this one, it's about minus 1.5 volt. And this section here is just total garbage and every time when these pulses came from the output it's, it's, it's total different. First time when I saw this uh, on my oscilloscope I thought okay eh, <laughs> this is the dead converter or uh, some uh, synchronization issues between the CPU and between the converter. But I dropped this uh, theory so I said the digital to analog converter is okay because I sent about a 15 kilohertz uh, signal to the converter. And guess what happened? When I sent this really high frequency, okay, to the converter, I saw 
the first part of this trapezoid something something it's for load the frequency and the waveform but this happened only on a positive side meanwhile on a negative side of course i received again this this garbage so i said nothing wrong with the converter then i focused more on the analog section of this board and guess what i find you see these uh, op amps here so this grc nice op amp and this one and the other one uh, maybe yeah you can see here few others uh, here also those guys here on this uh, control board of course i downloaded the data sheet for the, these small op amps those guys here that designed to run on a symmetric voltage source so let me show you what's going on here with these op amps i think it is the time to make some measurements now I have a plan to buy another oscilloscope for this uh, really slow analog works with the HDMI output and then of course I can uh, record uh, everything which is happening on the oscilloscope but at the moment this is how I solved it, sorry. So first what I want to check this really weird pulses on the output, okay, nice. <laughs> So this is this really weird signal from the output, but now it's producing something different than what produced until yesterday, <laughs> of course. And maybe you can see here, but this part here, it show me some kind of exponential uh, curve. Uh -huh. uh, have a look on the op-amp. So first leg, 3.4, fourth leg, minus minus one volt almost you see this let me measure the other one so first leg same and the fourth leg same mm -hmm. <laughs> i have a guess what's going on here let's jump uh, to the power supply part of this uh, pcb so we know this part here this section is a part of the digital circuit so we must get 3.3 volt and one and a half volt for this uh, really special uh, Yamaha CPU yeah this is the 3.3 and this one here is the 1.4 which is absolutely okay so this is why the CPU and the memory and everything is running here really perfectly and of course this is true also for the converter let's check uh, the analog voltage source which is located here i'm 100 percent sure they solved the plus minus voltage source for this op amps and for all the analog circuits on a really uh, a cheap but sophisticated way so they take the 5 volt the positive 5 volt from here across uh, some filtering of course and some regulation regulation and all this section it's about to generate minus 5 volt and then of course all the op amps can run on plus minus 5 volt i don't know why they are not uh, went up to 15 volts or something like this to increase the dynamic range and uh, decrease the op amp uh, current noise Hmm, I know I have clue. And uh, how this chip is working, of course, I will show you guys. But no, I just want to measure the output of the coil. Oh la la, we are already <laughs> on a source of the problem. It can generate only minus one volt. It's exactly the same voltage like what we measured on the op amps. So something is really wrong here with this uh, power supply circuit. Mm? This type of negative real back converters, they have a little dirty secret. Yep, now I got a number. And here is the block diagram for this uh, DC to DC converter. <laughs> this converter don't have any kind of solution to control by the CPU or other reset circuits. There is other DC to DC converters on the market, 
where uh, you can control the converter uh, with a simple digital signal and uh, most of the time they call this input as a EN, so like an enable uh, lag. But in this case, um, the engineers, they did other kind of solution on a PCB to switch on and off this uh, DC to DC converter. And why this is so important? Because, you know, we have uh, two parts, one digital part, and one analog part. And between the two, there is this uh, converter chip. If you cannot control the DC to DC converter from the CPU, then what can happen? Uh, the op-amps will start up earlier than the converter and they can generate pulses, noises, and they easily can kill your uh, monitor speakers or your microphone or whatever. This DC to DC converter must be controlled by some sort of uh, reset circuit or by the CPU itself. And uh, because this converter chip don't have any kind of enable input, this must be solved on the PCB. And if we have a closer look, we see here two small transistors. Yeah, what they did, they simply switching on and off the VCC for this chip. You see this uh, two big uh, resistor here in a parallel configuration. Now these two resistor is connected to the current sensing input of the chip IPK sense. So this is where this small converter chip knows what's going on with the current on our output. You see this 0 0.22 ohm resistor here? No, this one is this two guy here, okay? The voltage input must be between four and a half and a six volt. I have a really nice uh, long, but really sharp uh, probe for this uh, multimeter. <laughs> 1.6, it's like, uh, yeah, it's not enough. So what's going on here? Because the DC to DC converter get only one and a half volt, of course something really weird is going on inside in, in the converter, but somehow this converter <laughs> is so freaking good, he still can operate from a one and a half volt VCC input. So head off <laughs> for the designers for this chip, STM Electronic. Very nice job. <laughs>
to the DC to DC converter. And now we have here 1.2 volt, which is E. <laughs> and maybe you can see, but this leg, this one is connected to the 5 volt rail, which is these two dot here. Ah, nice. So we have almost 5 volt from the USB. Eh, eh, eh. I have a guess this is dead. <laughs> now the hardest part. To figure out <laughs> what kind of transistor is this. Let me do here some kind of uh, <laughs> really ugly, nasty trick. What I will do, I will short the collector and the emitter, okay? So then I will open this uh, transistor by hand, then we have to get minus 5 volt on the output of this DC to DC converter. Mm -hmm. And now I will short this transistor out. And voila! Minus 5 volt! Ta da! <laughs> and nice! Now we have only one job to find some transistor. <laughs> Which is similar to this unknown transistor. Let fat. Eh? Oh, maybe this is a bit too much, eh? Yep. Let's clean up the PCB a bit. And this pad. I'm telling you guys, sooner or later we will arrive to the point when uh, we cannot repair anymore electronics because of the size of the parts, eh? It turned out this uh, puppy is not good enough uh, for this configuration, so I have to find some other transistor. <laughs> oh my goodness. So now all the op-amps are connected back to the audio interface, and now we can measure the current here. And uh, why I need this number, it's really simple because uh, I have to know uh, which kind of transistor I have to choose. Uh, here it is, my lovely SMD collection. Oh, okay, from this I have a lot. Mm, it's PMP, yes, I'm right, but unfortunately this can drive only 100 milliamp, so <laughs> it's not good enough. MPN, no good. Mm. NPN, not good. 635 NPN, not good. Yeah, this one looks to me, it's okay, eh? This one is made exactly for switching applications. A nice SMD transistor, don't worry. <laughs> of course I will shorten the legs, but now for this test, it's okay. Looks to me it's a decent job. <laughs> I'll show you this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on, it's just uh, for a testing. E almost 4.7. And nice, we got the minus 5 volt. Uh oh, I heard some really nice noise. I hope we can play. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah. The output is working perfectly. Before I connect back the input, I want to measure a few really basic things on a, on a input uh, op-amp and also on the input uh, protection. Huh? Really, really weird design. Interesting. I printed out the documentation for this op-amp uh, here on an on a input and uh, the pin 4 is the negative uh, 5 volt 
okay and the pin 8 is the positive 5 volts so if anything burned up inside in the operational amplifier for example uh, this transistor here or if we have a really big problem here huh? <laughs> then of course uh, we will measure a little low resistance between the two legs ah guys yep this open is gone <laughs> okay uh you know what let me let me measure other one here you see so this is a, a normal condition now we can rewrite the history book of this uh, audio interface what's happened somebody killed the input with some really weird uh, microphone or guitar di box or something something so what's happened the 48 volt unfortunately passed the, the connected device it can be a guitar or a dead microphone or static uh, electric shock whatever first uh, the shock from the XLR input it's killed the first op amp here so something is burned up inside then it's shortened the negative rail and what's happened this small puppy transistor just can't handle this uh, really high current and this is why it's dead now i have to order a op amp this specific grc op amp has a really nice uh, low total harmonic distortion you see this so 0.01 percent fully fully bipolar technology so there is uh, no fat involved in audio path i have to order one and uh, we will see later on what's going on huh yep dead bye bye i hope you guys enjoyed uh, see you next time bye Mr. Uh, Torsten <laughs> from Herr uh, Torsten Torsten <laughs> his name is uh, Herr uh, Torsten <laughs> <laughs> why you are so small give me give me a hey, nice uh, you go there not to the paper ah and this is how I burn myself yeah because I'm stupid Butch.